Hey YouTube, so here we are on the job now. I'll show you this tree. It's it's kind of a <laughs> you know they they call you because they need a thing done a certain way, and it's one of those things. A lot of room, but a lot of tree. So here's the tree. This big pine, good sized pine. There's some metal in it. I'm not sure how good it'll be for a log for the mill. I'm worried about that. That's an Axe 19 behind it. And there's the little skid steer. So you can see the diameter is quite large. And it's tall. Like, it would reach this fence just barely. Like, I would do it with a high stump and not, you know, it would be exciting. It would it would clear with a high stump. It would just miss. It'd be really super close. But then we got this really nice cedar here, and we got a spruce tree, and we got a little oak tree, and we got this canopy that we wouldn't want to mess up. And so that means probably take a super massive top. Put out a massive top. It's got a ton of back lean. Yeah. The so, only question is. How big should we go? Big, probably big. So let's show you what it looks like from the side because from here you'll think we're just talking back lean because there's there's limbs on this side too, but we'll show you. So there's this big dog leg up there. So it, it jogs like back like this and we want it to go this way. And there's some, there's some limb weight out here, but most of the weight is on this side, plus the stem weight is so so if you're down below that dog leg and you're looking up it's a little freaky because you just see all this weight the wrong way going over your head you know toward the toward the stuff you don't want to hit doing that tied to the stump cutting with a big saw is a little exciting um in your brain you have to your brain has to has to go well wait a sec we're pulling hard out there with massive leverage so there's this committee in your head that has to be silenced by the facts now and then but the committee will always have a voice and if it doesn't that's complacency here's another view this is the back weight we don't really love that's the reason for a pulling power hey so Damien just pointed out that um, we have this bucket truck and I totally was not even thinking like that my brain is so unbucket motivated so climber motivated but yeah the bucket truck will reach where we want to make the cut and so it's one of those we don't do what we don't need to do and we do do what we do need to do or can do type of deals even though we're gonna miss out on some serious fun being strapped to the spar and popping a massive back leaning top but hey buckets there and i even flipped i flipped a coin and the coin said use the bucket dude so yeah he threw his phone on the ground and the screen was up that meant heads <laughs> and heads was the bucket I, I don't carry coins. <laughs> okay, step one, I'm on the bucket. I'm gonna go up as high as the bucket will go and then get out and climb the rest of the way and set a rigging uh, pole line. Big heavy, 26,000 pound strength line to pull a massive top. Some people might ask, well, why not just use the bucket or some rigging to get the back weight off? over the structure there. Well, we like to do what we can do and not be over overthinking it. Not add a whole bunch of work when we can just make three cuts with a pull line. So if you know you have command, you know you have pulling command on it and you've done it a bit, then you can save yourself a bunch of time in, in rigging things down in little pieces. See, this bows out, woo, over 
the little barn there. But we can make all of that go that way at one time with pulling power. I think I'll leave this to you guys after I pop this top and I'm gonna go home and work on some uh, store stuff. I'm gonna be uh, the Panther, Panther bar uh, distributor for the United States. That should be pretty cool. What a whack job this tree is, man. Unreal. That is some ridiculous weight out there. Ah. Logic says it'll go. Dang it. Okay, YouTube, I'm here at like the 10th co-dominant union and right, right in here is where I'm gonna put the pole line up nice and high. I need a clear route to the truck down there so I need to throw my line over the canopy so that it's a clean uh, shot from the truck to the pulling point. Okay. This should be a very commanding height to pull. It's going to need it. Because that is very thought provoking, especially with the truck right behind it. In some ways being tied to the spar with a bucket truck is kind of like a ladder. What, what holds you up is touching the ground, which is kind of sketchy. Climbing, you're up against a tree and you can move around in a circle on the spar. So. But if it, but if it was that iffy, we wouldn't even do this. We'd do something else. Although this wind sucks. It's going straight against us. Oh well. Just this one limb is just such mean back weight. And there. Got a good one going that way though. My rope's all pitchy. It's kind of got spots in it that are weird and pregnant. Keep going. It's impossible to tell on camera really. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to tell because it's just sky. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead and take it back. Yeah, for sure a good command. I'm going to come over and feel the tension with my hand. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, doesn't feel, it doesn't feel too tight, yeah. It's springy. It's a steep line angle, but there's a lot of spring in it too and the and the polydyne is stretchy so it stores the energy it's not like static it's pulling even 
even though like if you didn't like sometimes you can just load it up and the stored energy and the stretchy line will pull the tree over not this time though I'll go over there. Jeez. That top's just way cut out, just sitting there. I'm like, if I see this thing start leaning back, I'm gonna full throttle winch mode. Nah, it, it, it held straight up and down. The tension we had on it was perfect. Yeah, it was, it was perfect. I saw a tad bit of fluctuation at one point. But I was just like, if something. Okay, I'm out of the sweepers. Go ahead and pull it over. Well, you got your can ready? We gotta see if the can will blow down. Okay, ready? Yeah, go for it. Okay, pull it over. Did the can blow over? It's not there anymore. Hey YouTube, you see this grain? I gotta show you this, this is interesting. Something to watch out for. You think you have a wider hinge all the way across unless the grain runs out on one side if the grain isn't straight. The grain's not straight like this and it's like this. Then you've really got an inch here and five inches here. So I'm glad I stopped cutting when I did. We ended up over to the left further than I wanted. But you get a little ballsy when you got a lot of room. My 440 with the first person mount. All right, me and Jeff are gonna have a saw race. 
it'll be my 440. I guess Jeff's 461 with a full comp chain. So I got a full skip and he's got full comp. <laughs> Guys, we're all finished up. We're all packed up. See you on the next one. 96, 2006, 2016, plus four. 34 years I've been doing this kind of work. Getting up and strapping on my boots. And going out there and and having a little bit of everything, a little bit of fun, a little bit of danger, a little bit of pain, a little bit of failure, a little bit of glory, a little bit of money. And a lot of years now, I have a, I have a child that's 30. And I have a child that's one. So I've been graced nearly my entire career with some little dude, some little gal to do this. Put things in my boots. Today, it's dominoes. And it always affects me in a positive way. I don't even put my boot on anymore without looking first. Like the cowboy in the desert that shakes his boot out in case there's a scorpion in it. Except these are good scorpions. These little toys, for some reason, the kids always put toys in my boots. And I think it's some kind of blessing. Because you're getting ready to leave and you're going to go in uh, the number one or two hazard occupation in the world. And you get this little reminder in the morning from your kid that says, Hey, I put stuff in your boots. And you find that stuff when you're getting ready to go out into that battlefield and it reminds you that the best stuff is waiting at home. So 
And it's true. It might sound corny or cliche, but dang it. If I look at it close, I have to agree. Still love my job, still made for this, but more so than that, I'm, I'm made for this.